Hello everybody, and first of all, I need to explain this weird setup, why we don't use that big screen, because uh, I need a sound, but for technical reasons we cannot use sound and computer uh, with this screen, so I hope you see everything. Is it visible enough? No, it should be. The room is not so big. And I will move towards my computer here. And before we actually start, let's test the sound, because we will need sound today. Or on Chrome, accessibility testing with a screen reader, web accessibility testing with a screen reader, web content, hi there, slash, 6754880 dash, mile dash icon dot svg image, what's up, slash, 6754880 dash, mile dash icon dot svg image, voice over off. Okay, sounds. Sound is working, and as you could see from this simple example, sometimes there is a big difference between how page looks and how it may sound. And this is our topic for today. We are going to talk about screen readers and how to use screen readers for accessibility testing. My name is Sergey Krieger. Uh, I'm working for the company called Sinner Schader as a front end developer, and we have offices in Hamburg, Berlin, Prague, Frankfurt, Munich, when I'm from actually. And if you are interested, we currently have some open positions, so please check out our website. Before we uh, dive into the screen reader topic, let's discuss first what screen readers actually are and why we as developers or designers or, I don't know, copy, uh, copywriters need them. Screen reader is a software for both desktop and mobile devices that reads all the content from a grading system including web browsers. And sometimes a screen reader can be the only way uh, how people can get the information. And those people are mostly people with visual impairments, the uh, people who use screen reader a lot. Okay, screen reader seems like amazing app, but uh, probably we will not use screen reader without a real need uh, for that, right? So what is our interest uh, in using screen reader? Have you ever tried to use, uh, to browse at least familiar web, pa uh, web page without actually seeing a screen? You should definitely try it because you will understand the difference between actually seeing a real graphical interfaces and uh, interacting with the big and colorful elements uh, on the page. But there is a big group of people who uh, navigate the web pages exactly that way and those people are our customers and we as developers or as designers need to understand their way of interacting with our pages. Also accessibility is not optional anymore. Uh, more and more companies want their websites to be accessible and it's our job as developers to make them accessible. We can consider a screen reader as another tool for uh, building and testing web applications. And if you guys still don't have that skill, you're probably in the right place today. I'm going to show you how we can use screen reader in practice. Last year, an organization called WebBAM has conducted a big survey about screen readers. And I find the results of this survey really nice, and let's take a look at a couple of them. Here's a list of most common uh, screen readers. How many of you guys use Mac for developing? How about Windows? Uh, three people. How about Linux? Also three people. The good thing here to understand is two most popular screen readers, JAWS and NVDA, are built only for Windows. And our favorite voiceover on Mac OS, we, which we are using, or maybe we are planning to use, uh, working only on Mac. And here we need to understand that screen readers like browser, they are different. And we need to understand the differences between screen readers and how they work in different grading systems and how they work in different browsers, etc. And in this slide there's information how screen reader users are actually navigating the web. And for me, from the whole survey, this information is the most important because it shows us what exactly we need to test. We don't want to waste time for testing something. We want to know exactly how screen reader users are using our web pages, and we are going to use only those uh, test only those things. 
And the practical part of this presentation today is based exactly on these principles. Okay, now we know uh, what screen readers are, and I hope now you understand that in importance of screen readers for accessibility testing. Let's move to the practical part. By following this simple plan, we'll quickly go first through the setup and installation processes uh, and discuss some differences between uh, three screen readers, three most popular screen readers. Then I will tell you how to avoid two uh, problems you will definitely meet if you will start using screen readers. And then in the practical part, I will introduce a checklist for you uh, how to learn screen reader. And we will go through that checklist and see uh, how screen readers work uh, in practice. If you are a Mac user, you are a lucky one because VoiceOver screen reader on Mac OS doesn't require any additional uh, actions from your site. It's already there, it's installed, it's nicely configured, so the only thing you need to know is just how to uh, start VoiceOver. And we will discuss how to do that. If you are planning to use NVDA screen reader, which is, makes sense because this software is uh, totally free and built, by the way, by two blind developers from Australia, I guess, or something like that, from that part of the world. <laughs> and <laughs> with the NVDA screen reader, you need to do everything manually, but it's not a big deal because we are developers. It's not, we just will do it in five minutes. So you, in order to make it working, uh, you go to official web page, you download screen reader, you install it. It's really simple. And in principle, it's already uh, nice to go, but I would recommend if you're planning to use uh, NVDA screen reader for long term to install some extra voices because uh, original voices sound a bit, uh, a bit weird and metallic for me. And also there are a couple of plugins like uh, virtual cursor highlighting and some other plugins you may uh, consider to installing. So anyway, before using a screen reader, you need to do all these sections. And if you are thinking about Joe screen reader, the installation process is really simple. You download it from official website and you install it and the installation process is really straightforward and then on the first run you will be asked to activate it. And for activation there are two ways. Either you buy an authentication key, which by the way really expensive, it's like thousand or something euro. Yeah. Or and you will be able to use a Joe screen reader on one machine only. But if you are a web agency and there are several developers who are planning to use screen reader, the second option is uh, good for you, at least my company bought for us this USB dongle which has it's a physical USB and it has a secret key inside and uh, you are using Joe's screen reader legally once you plug in this USB dongle. Amazing option. And if you are not ready to buy this expensive screen reader, uh, you may consider just to try it for 40 minutes, it's totally free. Believe me or not, guys, but when you just starting using screen readers, uh, you will have you will meet two problems. And today I'm here to tell you about those problems because I had those problems and some of my colleagues had those problems. And now I will tell you how to avoid them. Not avoid, but how to go through them really quickly. The first thing you need to know, you need to know how to quickly start screen reader and how to quickly exit it. In order to um, be really productive with the screen reader, you don't have to spend time for starting it, for uh, exiting it. You need to know these shortcuts. And by the way, you don't have to memorize all these shortcuts now because I will provide you with a link uh, to this presentation. It's already online and you can just, when you have time, you can just open this presentation and go through this. Uh, Shortcuts, everything is like straightforward. And if you see an asterisk next to uh, a shortcut, that means that this uh, shortcut is not active by default. You need to go to settings and activate. So, first problem is uh, here you know how to start and how to exit screen reader. The second problem is probably even more important than the first one. When you just start using screen reader, it's really annoying uh, to hear screen reader all the time. And believe me, screen reader is going to talk to you a lot. <laughs> when, you start, when you start screen reader, it starts talking to you which application it is, and some media information, and some other stuff. And at some point, you will find, probably after 10 minutes or even less, you will uh, figure out that, uh, OK, maybe it's enough to just test keyboard, or <laughs> not even touch screen reader. But, there is a nice magic K 
key for all three screen readers. It's a control. You click control, and it just you just shut up screen reader, which is really nice. And I will demonstrate how to do that many many times today because uh, <laughs> otherwise we'll uh, finish in the morning. Okay, another important thing uh, you need to know about screen readers uh, is a screen reader key. Screen reader key is, in addition to other keys, uh, will allow you to perform all screen reader operations from the keyboard. This screen reader key allows screen reader to have all short combinations unique in the operating system. From my experience, some of them are uh, still uh, remapping, but it's not a big deal. And the good thing is that screen readers are smart enough to work differently with a big keyboard for desktop and small keyboard uh, and laptop. And in order to uh, understand which screen reader key is used in your operating system, you need to go to a uh, settings, check it, out. check it out. Good, enough theory, let's go to practice. Here's a checklist I created for you guys. Uh, this checklist is almost entirely based on the information from the screen reader survey and uh, after completing all these items you will be able to use screen readers uh, for accessibility testing. And today we are going to go in the practical examples through all these five items and see how we can use screen readers for testing. Let's go. Headings. Headings uh, are the most important thing uh, when you uh, try to navigate with the screen reader. According to statistics, most of screen reader users, when they land on the page, uh, in the first seconds they reading all the headings first to understand what the page is about, and then after that they make a decision if they want to stay on the page or they want to leave it. So before reading all the content, they go through headings, and that's really important to have all the headings accessible for screen readers. And here's a demo page I created. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to test all these headings because this page contains only some text and a couple of headings. And from visual point of view, everything is nice. Let's see uh, how screen reader likes that. And by the way, I forgot to mention, if you see me reloading the presentation time to time today, that means that this presentation engine doesn't really work well with the screen reader. So I'm, I'm not cheating. I'm just making uh, this slide like a page because all the slides are on the, on, the, on the same page. So, as screen reader users, we probably are not supposed to see the screen, right? And to make our testing today more fun, first I will reload uh, the page. Let's turn off the light. And now there is no screen. There is a screen, there is information, we cannot see that. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start my screen reader and I'm going to test all the headings. Over on Chrome, accessibility testing with a screen reader. And by the way, how well you can hear all the sound? Can I, should I make it louder? It's okay. It's okay, good. So, uh, screen reader is on. Let's try to uh, go through all the headings using shortcuts from the previous slide. Heading not found. Oops. Heading not found. Voice over off. And that's a problem because from the visual point of view, everything is nice. But there is no headings and congratulations, we just lost a uh, customer. Because I'm not sure if uh, screen reader users will continue reading all the content because they don't know if it's huge page or small like this one. Let's see the problem. And here is how these headings are structured. And I know that you may find it weird. It's not a weirdest example from today's presentation, but Time to time, I still see these examples. I don't understand why, but it still exists. And in order for screen reader to see all the headings, there is a mm, really simple way, like really simple. We have uh, heading elements from HTML, I don't know, from 90s even. It's like uh, there was a text and there was heading elements and nothing more, and links probably. Links is the next point. <laughs> we will see mm, a lot of fun in the links. So we change all the headings to the original headings. From uh, visual perspective, nothing is changed. Let's test it. I'm starting my screen reader now. Over on Chrome. And now I'm going to go through all the headings. Heading level 1, giant panda. Heading level 2, behavior. Heading level 2, diet. 
voice over off. And we are done. And just to uh, emphasize the importance of screen readers, 60 or almost 70% of all screen reader users are navigating the page using headers. So it's really important to have them uh, done right. Let's go further. Links. Links can be really useful if a screen reader user is familiar with the page. There is a nice way uh, how screen reader users can navigate through visited links, for example. Uh, and if you know that there is a link you already visited, it's really fast to navigate through all of them and uh, choose the link you need. Here is the same page with four links on that. And without actually talking about that, let's see how these links, uh, how screen reader likes those links. We turn on the lights, start the, uh, the screen reader. Over on Chrome. And now I'm gonna uh, navigate through all the links. Link not found. Oops, no links. Voice over off. Again, screen reader doesn't see uh, what we want. And here, you're gonna laugh now, but this is. It exists right now. Uh, I was working on several projects uh, which uh, I from the middle, not from the very beginning. And when I came to the project, I saw a thousand times these examples. Even spans or divs as a links, but the second example is like, I don't know, every second link in the project was done that way. And I can understand that because now Angular, React and all these cool guys doing everything and you can do even with the simple JavaScript all this navigation. But the problem is when screen reader doesn't see uh, href attribute, it doesn't consider this link as a link. But links are really important for screen reader users. In order screen reader to work well with the links, you need to have either href with a real link, but if for some reason you cannot do that, if you have a nice, like, I don't know, React or Angular handler for the links and you want to do redirecting in single pages, uh, if you have this situation, you need to use at least roll link. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be good for screen readers. Let's see the good example. And I don't know how well you can uh, see the blue link colors, but two of the links are uh, visited, purple. Let's start our screen reader and see how uh, it works with the links now. Over on Chrome. Now I'm trying to navigate through all the links. China link. Chingling Mountains visited link. Sichuan link. Bamboo visited link. Already working. And let's try to navigate through only visited links. Chingling Mountains visited link. Bamboo visited link. Voice over off. And we are done with the links. So now we know how to test headings. Now we know how to test links. Let's uh, learn how to read properly. Reading is uh, actually screen readers, not screen singers, not screen writers, screen readers. And they are supposed to read. And there are a bunch of ways how you can uh, read uh, the text from your website with the screen readers. but. Uh, since we are not using screen readers full time and only want to use them for testing, in my practice I found that there are two uh, really uh, convenient ways how you can uh, read the text. Is a reading all the content and reading by sentences. And this screen uh, shortcuts uh, about that. Here's the same text, same links, and let's see how screen reader can read all this text. Over on Chrome. And now I'm start uh, pressing the short combination for reading all the content. Behavior, accessibility testing with a screen reader, web content, heading level one, giant panda, slash text dot png image, heading level two, behavior, the giant pan. And you can start laughing here because we didn't see any images, but. Voice over off. I'm not kidding you guys, I see these examples like really, really often. And especially in banners, because uh, banner developers, like a special group of developers, I guess, I was developing <laughs> banners and I, use, I used the text inside of images because I needed fast and cross-browser solution, like I was supposed to make a banner for 15 minutes and just sell it to the customer. 
the point is that maybe it's not really bad to use images with the text, but the rule of thumb is if you have a text and image, if you have any text in the page, this text should be readable by screen readers. And this is how our text looks like. And simple uh, alternative text will solve the problem. Again, this example is really weird. Simply try to drag it, and it's draggable. And now I'm going to uh, read all this content. Or on Chrome, heading level 1, Giant Panda. The Giant Panda is a bear native to South Central China. Image, heading level 2, Behavior. And we are done. Voice over off. So now, even for some weird reasons, this text is not a text, but image, we can read it. Good. All of you guys are probably know uh, what landmarks are. It's a fancy HTML5 element that can split uh, all the content into bigger logical parts like header, main content, footer, uh, navigation bars, etc. And landmarks can be really, really useful for navigating because let's say you want to read the news and you've been on this website many times. You don't want to read all the navigation and all the information after. You just want to jump to the main content and read the news article and go somewhere if you are in a hurry. And this is uh, landmark can be really useful for that. And there's a way how you can navigate through landmarks uh, with screen readers. Unfortunately, VoiceOver uh, on Mac OS doesn't have a dedicated shortcut for landmarks only, but there is another way how to navigate with landmarks using a navigation tool. Now we're going to test how it works, and then I will say a couple of more words about uh, navigation tool. So this is a a bit more complicated example with the header, with the footer, main content, uh, navi two navigation bars like main navigation and social navigation, some links and headings. Let's see how that works with the screen reader. Starting my screen reader again. Over on Chrome. And now I'm going to open a navigation tool panel. Landmarks menu. And this how screen reader uh, sees all our landmarks. We saw that we were supposed to have uh, landmarks there. Let's see why it's not working. Voice over off. This is a code. And I hope you uh, are not using that code because HTML5 support is now like really nice. So this code should be like that. And if you have all these uh, elements, screen reader, you don't have to do anything. Screen reader will recognize them uh, by default. But if, for some weird reason, again, you're going to use divs, all those elements, they have uh, special roles. You can use roles and you can even uh, assign a special text for them. Not a problem. And here's a good example. And let's actually go out and see how that works. Or on Chrome. And now I'm opening the rotor navigation tool in VoiceOver. Landmarks menu. And here we go. Here's a list, and we can using arrows to navigate through all these guys. Let's uh, assume we are gonna jump to the main and then start reading from the main. We are choosing uh, the main from the list. Application, banner, navigation, main. And then clicking enter, and we are in the main. The giant panda is a bear native to South Central China. And now we can continue reading from this place using the short keys we already discussed. Heading level two, behavior. The giant panda spends its life roaming and feeding in the bamboo forest of the voice over off. And here we go. Now we have the same page working really nice with the screen readers. And now a couple of words about navigation tool. Navigation tool is the most common way how you can navigate to different element groups like headings, images, lists, tables, iframes, etc. In VoiceOver, uh, navigation tool called Rotor, and it's really customizable. You can choose from this list any uh, element groups you want to navigate through, and you will see them in uh, the Rotor. We saw on the landmarks, but you can navigate easily through all these guys, and it's really, really simple. If you are using Joe's screen reader, the situation is slightly different. There is no single tool how to use navigation uh, element list, navigation tool in Joe's, but you need to be aware of two uh, tools. It's a quick key manager which 
allows you to see or even reassign short keys for the group elements like headings, links, and other. And then there is an element list uh, which you can open with a shortcut from the previous slide. And you cannot see all the groups here, but you can open heading list separately, uh, links list, uh, iframe list, table list, maybe, whatever. And if you are using NVDA screen reader, uh, element list and that is working pretty similar like in voiceover. Uh, the only disadvantage of this an element list is that it's not customizable. It's just working, but for me, for testing purposes, all these five uh, items are more than enough. You can navigate through links, headings, form elements, buttons, and landmarks. For testing, it's perfect. And we are done with the checklist. And it didn't take like more than 15 minutes, I guess. And probably uh, you will spend some more time, but from my experience, I believe that it will not take for you guys more than 30 minutes to open this checklist, to follow uh, all the items, to try it out with different screen readers, with the screen reader of your choice. Uh, all of them, I tried all of those screen readers and all of them are working pretty nice. And for me, it's not more complicated like riding the bike. It works exactly the same. It's really hard at the beginning, but when, once you learn it, you won't forget it. And once you... Uh, actually, let's recap what we learned today first. There are two most common screen readers. Draw screen reader, uh, NVDA screen reader, and voiceover screen reader. And we really need screen readers. We need screen readers for accessibility testing. We need screen readers for understanding our users, understanding their way of interacting with our websites, which is really important. And to learn screen reader is really simple. And you could see, it. I just did it like in 15 minutes. Of course, I knew what I'm doing, but it's, it's not a big deal to learn it. And after we got familiar with the basic options we covered today, you may consider to uh, learn how to deal with forms because it's really important, how to navigate through images or lists, for example, or how to read tables. And by the way, tables reading is really simple. It's really common uh, practice uh, when you want to, for example, uh, show charts for the screen reader users. So you can convert everything to table, and table reading is really simple in screen readers. And when you need some more information about screen readers, please check on official documentations for all the, browser, uh, all the screen readers. And there is also a nice uh, article on WebAIM about screen readers. It's reading, it tells you about why you need screen readers, how to use screen readers, etc. And also on YouTube there is a video series uh, recorded by Rob Dotson from Google. It's about accessibility in general, but uh, there are a couple of uh, videos about screen readers too. If you want to contact me, you can visit my website, surveyfigure.com and here is a link to this presentation and probably we will publish that also in the uh, Meetup Twitter just to have it accessible for you guys. And thank you very much and I will be glad to answer any questions you have.